going to be part two of taking a deeper look at Slackware. Uh, in this uh, video, we'll take a brief look. It, it'll be sort of involved, but brief at the startup scripts and maybe a little bit how to configure uh, Slackware to um, start up and what the different options are. So it starts with the init tab. An init tab is uh, the configuration for init, which is the root process uh, for everything. Um, so this typically is one of the things you may want to edit uh, as a Slackware user to change the default run level to 4 if you want graphical login. I don't. Um, I'm old school. I think after you log in, you can type start x if you want, and it eliminates some problems needing fail-safe sessions and stuff if you botch your X in it. Uh, this also defines uh, the scripts that are run at system initialization. Single user. The big one here, rc.m at multi-user. And when you either shut down or reboot, rc.0 and rc.6 are the same. One's a single symlink to the other. And uh, also starts up your uh, your logins, your getties, and uh, any serial getties or dial-up if you want them, if you still have dial-up uh, lines that you need to access uh, your system with. And of course for run level 4, as at the top you saw the run level default was 3. That's a base multi-user um, setup. You can change that to 4. Uh, and that will run RC.4, which starts XDM or GDM, uh, whichever is your preference. So the startup scripts here uh, do all the control. These are what comes from Slackware. You should not edit these unless you have good reason to. Um, as I said before, RC.M one you'll see most of the time, uh, RC.6, and as you see, RC.0 is a symlink to RC.6, and RC.4 is for starting um, the display manager. Let's take a look at RC.M. We won't go through the whole thing, but just take a look at some of uh, some of what's going on. So in boot up, when you see the going multi-user, you will see this. Uh, you, this is when this gets executed. Sorry if I'm a little off uh, today. Dealing with a little bit of a sinus infection, so make my, my voice sound a little strange, and my mental processes are a little slower. Um, probably helped out by one or two too many doses of cough syrup. But we do some basic setup here. Um, set up the shared libraries, give it a host name. But the blocks that are interesting here are things like this. So in rc.d, you have a collection of rc scripts, right? So startup scripts, rc. whatever. In this case, pcmcia. And rc.m, and, and the others, they look through and say, is this executable? So that's your, your toggle to say, do you want this to run or don't you want it to run? If it's executable, it gets run. If it's not executable, it doesn't get run this uh, this conditional here. So if it's executable, uh, run it. So in this case, PCMCIA. Uh, this is oftentimes referred to as a BSD style init. Uh, and, and it is, but not quite in the same way that modern BSDs, like you may see in FreeBSD or OpenBSD, do things with an rc.conf. Um, this is more akin to the old 4.3 BSD uh, or maybe Sun OS 4 series uh, startup. And I find this actually preferable for a lot of a lot of purposes. And to draw some distinctions uh, between system 5 uses a set of directories and iterates through each startup script in that directory, um, which gives you a bit more flexibility, but you really don't need to change uh, startup behaviors that much, um, I've found. Um, and I'd be a little torn. Uh, for instance, I was running a 
production server in a business environment, yeah, I'd probably want System 5 startup just because more people are familiar with it. Um, and Slackware can s support System 5 startup for third-party software uh, that doesn't play as nice with the, the BSD style in it. Um, but, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. Uh, I definitely wouldn't use System D. I think it's, it's overblown, and if you wanted that sort of functionality, look at SMF in Solaris or Open Solaris. Um, for one of those nice, you know, kind of uh, really advanced startup environments. But the uh, the keep it simple principle, the KISS principle as they call it, I like this BSD style startup. It It's very clear what's going on. It's very easy to modify uh, behaviors. So let me take another look here. See, I've, I have a couple of uh, things that were added that aren't aren't default. Um, in the Slackware install. So Plex Media Server and MongoDB. So how do you start those if you're not supposed to edit rc.m? Well, there's rc.local, and this goes back a long time. So this you can put in anything you want um, to start that's local. This will not get overwritten during, uh, or should should be respected during any sort of upgrade. So you, you bring in a new rc.m for some new component of the base OS. This won't get touched. And you see here, I start up Plex Media Server, and uh, you see the note the same construct. So if it's executable, start it. And the same for MongoDB. If it's executable, run startup script. So pretty straightforward. Uh, and this, this gives quite a bit of flexibility. You probably should also add a stop in rc.local underscore shutdown uh, to shut things down cleanly. Things like Plex, not so important. Um, you know, other things you'll, you'll probably want to execute the stop um, for those as appropriate. Um, so startup and slack were really simple. And that's what makes it so beautiful is that it's, it's very easy to understand what's going on um, and to be able to trace through it quite quickly. And also toggle. So for instance, if I want Apache HTTP to start uh, on boot, I just add the execute permission to rc.httpd. Now, httpd will start up when the system starts. And stop when it stops, because uh, there's that, that mirror um, with you know rc.6, so run level 6 and 0 are halt and reboot. And so it'll, it'll shut those down. Um, the other really important startup scripts here, well, there, there's a couple, right? So we have RC sysv in it. Let's take a look at that one. And this will do uh, the system five. So if we do a, a start, so we get the we get the run level here. And what it does is it iterates through rc dot whatever dot d and starts it. So an equivalent for stopping, it does all the case. So it behaves just like um, System 5 startup elsewhere. Now unless you can not avoid it. I wouldn't recommend using this. If you have control, write a startup script for what you're doing. If you're pulling stuff off Slack builds, it will typically have the correct Slackware or BSD style startup script. Some commercial software does not, and so the RC, the System 5 init, call it extension here, uh, is designed to support that. Um, and that will be a, a kind of crutch for using some oddball commercial software. Honestly, I haven't seen too many examples of it. I'm trying to think. Um, you know, maybe something like our studio server uses it, although I can't be sure. It's been a while since I've used that. The other thing you'll probably want to take a look at in rc.d is uh, rc.inat1 which starts up the uh, your network interfaces. 
So it reads sources inet1.conf to get some variables set and goes through them. Uh, generates your uh, your network uh, setup and network configuration and sets up some routes. Looks to do bridging. Turns up the interfaces and iterates through the interfaces and performs the configuration. We won't look through this whole thing, but we'll look at the configuration, which is what you'd actually need to, to mess around with. All you do is define uh, some arrays. So they're all indexed the same as your Ethernet interfaces. So 0 for ETH0, 1, ETH1, pretty straightforward. Um, I use this network startup for wired um, Ethernet, things that are going to be in one place. Uh, for laptops, I do use Network Manager. And again, pretty easy, just change rc.network manager, give that the execute flag, and you're ready to go with Network Manager. It's come a long way. Um, so I would now use Network Manager on laptops. And I do use Network Manager on laptops, etc. Um, especially if we're doing things like wireless and uh, moving around on networks a lot. So all you have to do, define the IP address, netmask. If you're going to use DHCP, you can. Uh, host name for DHCP. Um, you may notice even though this machine has four, well, it you you would see, see blanks here for four. It doesn't, you can have as many Ethernet interfaces as you want defined here. I actually have five uh, NICs on this machine, um, but I keep three of them available for doing things like uh, packet capture and, and tying um, emulators to them uh, with SIMH. Uh, you can also set up some bridging here and can do your wireless config. Again, for roving wireless a la a laptop, I would recommend uh, Network Manager. So that kind of wraps it up. Not a whole lot to Slackware Startup. Uh, pretty easy to understand. I would recommend going through, reading rc.s, rc.m. You'll understand a lot of how the system starts up and, uh, and gets to a usable point. Um, let me know what, uh, what might be a good idea to see next for taking a deeper look at, at Slackware um, and maybe how, it, how it's different uh, than some of the other um, major linuxes. Um, you know, another, another quick one that I, I may do is, is just where things are in the file system, which is maybe there's some minor differences. Um, not really. So uh, do leave a comment below. Um, hopefully this was, this was handy. And uh, thanks.